Now I found it unbelievable that it's almost a year since I took delivery of my shiny new black T120 and a little over six months since her debut as the super sexy centerfold of my videos. Now I don't know about other people but I pretty much see her as the star of the show and she's under the scrutiny of a ultra high definition video camera at least once a week. Now no one wants to see a dirty rusty bike in the videos so I have a very strict regime of at least once a week going through a complete cleaning and polishing procedure to keep a look in as best I can. Now among other things I'm a time served auto sprayer. Now the 10 years that I spent restoring and painting cars and motorbikes gave me a unique insight into how paint works and how best to preserve the aesthetic appearance of a vehicle. It put me in the enviable position of having access to the very best products and being able to judge one against another to work out what I thought was the best to do the job. Now I still use that expertise if you like and knowledge today and I pride myself in knowing exactly what I want from every product to do every individual job on the bike. Now over the past few months people have passed comments about the appearance and the condition of the bike and I have had regular requests asking me to do a video on how I maintain the bike aesthetically and that's what we're going to look at today. Now many people will have clicked onto this video expecting to see me giving instructions on how to wash your bike. And I'm sorry to disappoint you, but that's not going to happen because that isn't where keeping your bike clean starts. The old adage of a prevention is better than a cure is very much relevant here. And the art of preserving the appearance of your bike actually starts where most people think that it actually finishes. And that's with the application of various dressings and coatings to help prevent that dirt from sticking to your bike in the first place. You can't make your bike last forever. Eventually it is going to return to the base materials that it was originally born from. But you can slow that deterioration down just by following some relatively simple and inexpensive steps on a regular basis. For now, we're going to assume that your bike has been washed, it's clean and it's dry. Now first things first, the engine. The Bonneville's engine is one of its main aesthetic focal points, but the bare aluminium brushed engine casings and the throttle bodies are already gaining a bit of a bad reputation for turning to crap in short order if they're not properly protected. Likewise, the matte crinkle finish black paintwork on the actual engine itself looks nice but it is a magnet for dirt and without a little bit of care it's soon going to start looking grey and tired and it's an absolute nightmare to get clean once that dirt gets into the pores on the paint. Now taking care of this before you do anything else is a very simple and cheap job but it can be a little bit messy so make sure that you do this before you go onto the rest of your bright work and your paintwork. My weapon of choice here is GT85. Now this is an age-old product that's been around since Noah and his Ark. It's a very light machine oil, it smells pleasant and it's a really good water dispersant. Don't use WD-40 because it doesn't contain the same properties and it won't do the same job. Now one very useful ingredient of GT85 is that it contains PTFE. PTFE is an abbreviation of a really long word that I can't pronounce but one name that it's sold under that we're all very familiar with is Teflon. That's the stuff that they use for making non-stick patterns. This mixed with the oil provides a barrier which will greatly reduce the amount of dirt that can stick to your engine components. And I can honestly say that whilst I'm cleaning my bike, I have never had to scrub or rub to get dirt off the engine because I apply this stuff first. Now you just simply need to go all over the engine with it with very light dust coats. Don't go on it too heavy, it shouldn't be running down in drips all over your engine when you've finished. Just light coats, just enough to wet the surface. While you're at it, it doesn't hurt just to go over your radiator, your radiator housing and the lower members of your chassis or frame and this is going to protect all your vulnerable areas in one fell swoop. Now I only recommend GT85 for some 
summer use. It will take some light rain and sustained exposure to water will eventually wash the oil element of it away but it does leave the PTF behind and it does still do its job. Winter time you need to be using something heavier like ACF 50 unless your bike's going to be garaged in which case I would say continue using the GT85. Leave it to dry for a few minutes and then with a workshop wipe or a piece of kitchen roll just go around it and remove any excess or heavy drips that you may have left behind and the job's done. Now when the engine's running obviously it is going to get hot. Some of this stuff will evaporate and you'll be able to visibly see it evaporating. Don't worry I've used this for years there's no danger of fire even if you've left some of it on your down pipes and it won't burn or blacken and leave any nasty marks that you've got to clean off. It is a really clean, nice, easy product to use. Obviously, a word of caution, keep it off your brakes and your tyres, but I do also tend to use this on my rear swing arm as well, so a bit of cloth or some newspaper just to protect your tyres and brakes while you're doing that. Next up, of course, is the paintwork. Best thing to do is to remove the seat because you need to get access to every bit of available paintwork, both on your tank and on your side panels and your rear fender. The point of waxing is to protect, not just beautify, and the areas that are covered by the seat are probably the most vulnerable because they will retain damp and moisture. Now, one thing I learned as a paint sprayer whilst talking to customers, especially on car handovers after I've the job is that a lot of people believe that modern paint doesn't require to be waxed and that it is in fact fully waterproof this is not the case paint is water resistant it's not waterproof now I think it's true to say that with the advent of legislation about 20-25 years ago where all automotive paints had to be water based modern automotive paint is nowhere near as good as it was 25 years ago it must be protected with a good quality wax to keep the outside elements from getting through to the metal substrate underneath now here's just a little demonstration to try and give you an idea why and I would add that this demonstration is a gross exaggeration it's just intended to give you an idea of the structure of paint makeup now paint is made up of paint particles these are solid particles of paint and that's represented by these marbles now in the paint these are mixed together with a blend of binders and solvents and as the paint cures and dries the solvents disappear and the binders shrink and this basically leaves the particles freestanding with gaps in between and this is what allows the paint to expand and contract with changes in temperature and flexing of panels without the paint splitting now don't get me wrong the gaps in between these paint particles are microscopic in fact they are smaller than your average water molecule which means that in general water molecules can get through the paint to the substrate underneath however irregularities do occur here and there that will allow water through this is why it's always recommended that a minimum of three coats of paint is applied in order to minimize the chances of water getting through now this works fine when paint is new but as the curing process continues over years and the paints worst enemy ultraviolet radiation works on that paint those gaps open up and eventually water does start to get through now a good quality wax performs two functions one is it provides a protective coating that seals the paint from the outside elements the second is that it provides a shield against UV radiation cutting out some of that radiation and slowing down that final curing process that leads to a final breakdown and to deterioration now so far the best substance known by man to actually perform that task is a wax called carnauba wax now this is a vegetable extract believe it or not from the carnauba palm which comes from brazil now blended with other waxes usually beeswax and certain resins and polymers this provides the best shield that man so far has been able to come up with nothing has surpassed it yet now wax and polish are two completely different things 
Wax is a non-abrasive protective coating and polish is a liquid abrasive. Basically it's a liquid form of sandpaper. If your bike is less than four years old, unless it has been abused, there should be no need to use an abrasive polish on it. And if you think there is a need to use an abrasive polish on it, take it to a professional unless you know exactly what you're doing yourself. Because things can quickly get out of hand with these polishes, believe me, I've seen it. Now when I say professional, I mean a proper body shop auto sprayer refinisher. Not a valeter or detailer that took a one day course once. They're not the same thing. Now the problem here is that everybody, including manufacturers, tend to use the word wax and polish interchangeably and I've even seen wax polish written on wax bottles. Check to make sure that the product that you're buying isn't abrasive. Usually a good indicator is that if it says it doesn't leave a white residue, that's an indication that it doesn't contain carbide powder, which is what is used to actually provide the abrasion or cut. So if it says that it doesn't leave a white residue, you can be fairly sure that it's non-abrasive. Now, for many, many years, I used Salmon as Can Arbor Liquid Wax, and I would still highly recommend it. It is an excellent polish, and it can be obtained quite cheaply. It's easy to apply, and the results last a long time. And as I say, I would still highly recommend this, especially if budget is an issue. But a few years ago, I came across Muck Off Miracle Shine. Now, I do like most Muck Off products. There are one or two that I don't like, but by and large, I found them to be very reliable and good value for money but one thing that impressed me about this product is that it not only contains can arbor wax but it also contains PTFE. Now for me, the two combined should provide the ultimate wax. Now when I did some tests and compared it with my trusted salmonized product, I found the results looked pretty much the same, perhaps just a little bit better. But on average, it was lasting three to four weeks longer once it had been applied. And I also found that due to that PTFE, the bike was much easier to clean in between applications of the wax. Now to apply this wax you just need a couple of good quality soft microfiber cloths. I usually use the Excel ones, I can get a pack of 10 from Amazon for around about 6 or £7. I wash them after every use and they will last me for years. Now a word of caution, wash them in your washing machine, do not use fabric conditioner. The chemicals that are used in the conditioner stay in the cloth, they can bind to the wax when you're trying to buff up and it causes glazing on the cloth which can cause scratches. Now you apply the wax thinly in long straight sweeps along the length of the panel or the tank or whatever you happen to be applying it to. There's no need to put a lot of pressure on, all you are basically doing is spreading it. Now I have to admit I went a bit over the top when I was doing this tank. I wanted to make sure that it showed up on video and I was a bit overzealous. You literally want just enough to cause a faint haze as it dries. Make sure that you apply it to every part of the tank that you can possibly get access to with your fingers. There's no point just treating the places that you can see. Then leave it to dry for a few minutes, it doesn't take long. When it comes to buffing, don't rub hard, just very light, gentle pressure to polish it up. I prefer to do one part or panel at a time, put the wax on, then buff it off and then move on to the next one. If you want to apply the wax to all your panels, then go back and buff them all. That's entirely up to you, it doesn't matter. The key to doing this job right is attention to detail. Make sure you're getting all the edges around trim and badges and clean out any polished residue to make sure you haven't got any unsightly marks left behind that's going to spoil the look of the job. Now this polish doesn't leave any white residue and it's perfectly safe on rubber and black plastics. If you do go over onto your knee pads or your seat or whatever, just a quick buff up and it brings it straight out. It's no problem at all. There's no staining left behind. It's fine on smooth plastics like your indicators and the great thing about it is that it can also be used on chrome. Now start at the top of your bike and work your way down. Make sure that you've done all your paint work before you start moving on to other stuff like plastics or chrome which is near the bottom of your bike where you're still likely to perhaps pick up the odd piece of grit or dirt which could 
damage your paintwork if you use your cloth on that bit later on. It makes bringing the chrome up on your wheels really quick and easy and it can also be used on your exhaust. Same rules apply, just light even strokes to remove any staining, then when it's dry, buff it up. Now the recommended retail on this particular polish I think is £16 at the moment but it is one of those products that you can get just about everywhere and if you shop around online uh, you can get it quite cheap. I have actually managed to obtain this for as little as £10 in the past although it's a bit of a potluck situation on the day that you're looking for it. Now you can add successive coats of this and effectively layer it up one coat after another for a more durable and long lasting finish. If you're going to do that you must leave about 24 hours in between coats for it to properly cure before you go back over it again. The reason being that the solvents that are in the polish if you put them over a previously polished panel before it is fully cured it will effectively remove it again so it must cure properly before you recoat. Right so we've sorted out the engine, we've waxed up all the paintwork, waxed and polished the chrome the only thing left to do is the tyres. Now I don't do this every time, only when the tyres are starting to look a little bit stained or grey. And I have a bottle of muck off tyre sham that's been languishing my garage now for about four years. It's really easy to apply, I just use a little off cut from a car washing sponge. The first application usually sinks in and a second application is required after half an hour or so. After that it does start to lay on the top and it looks nice. The great thing about this is that it does dry to a very flexible shiny finish and it lasts for months. It protects your tyres from degradation again from UV radiation which is important for tyres especially on a bike that doesn't get a lot of mileage and it smells delicious. This is actually a feature of all muck off polishes and products and to be quite honest you don't know whether to apply them to your bike or drink them. Now they say that practice makes perfect and I have actually got this off to a fine art now. This whole operation including actually washing the bike generally takes me about an hour and a half to two hours. It might take a little bit longer in winter when it's cold and it takes longer to dry the bike but generally speaking that's all the time that I require to get the complete job done. Now I am becoming very conscious that this video is running on a little bit but there's just a few more things to go through. First of all matte paintwork. Now I did contact Muckoff by telephone yesterday morning just to ask them about the suitability of this particular Miracle Shine polish for matte paintwork. As it contains no abrasive they say it is safe on matte paintwork but it may satinize it slightly which is obviously going to be the effect of polishing it. Having said that I have owned a number of matte painted bikes in the past and just the action of your clothes rubbing against it and you know drying it off with a towel when you've washed it that kind of thing also has the same effect. Now they did send me through just for testing a bottle of the Muckoff matte finish detailer which obviously is specifically designed for matte paintwork. Now I'm unable to test it at the moment because I don't have access to a matte painted bike. If there is anyone living local to me in the whole area who would be willing to take part in a very short video just to try this stuff out, I would love to hear from you and you can actually contact me through my email address which is on the main profile page here on YouTube. Now another product that I do use regularly as well, uh, this comes in handy in between washes and it just allows you to give the bike a quick spritz over if it doesn't warrant a full clean and that's the speed wax. Now I also like to take this out with me when I'm filming because it does come in handy for sorting out any uh, unsightly messes from bugs or beds that kind of thing while I'm out shooting. Now that is I think about it. I'm sorry it has gone on so long but there was such a lot to get in. Now if people really want to know what procedures and chemicals etc I use for actually cleaning the bike let me know in the comments section and I'll do my best to get something together for you in the next few weeks. I'll leave a link um, for the products that I've shown you and used today in the video description for those that are interested. Now on a final note I did receive an email from 
Trekology last week just to let me know, to let you know, that the small sized aluminium camping table is now back in stock at Amazon. So if you are waiting for those, they're there now, grab one while they're available. Those of you that managed to stay awake throughout this video, thank you very much and um, I hope you found it useful and I'll see you next time.